right. Well, hello, everybody. Hello. I decided to go ahead and hit the button. We got this is the best. We got like taffy, and the reason it's the best is you really can't eat taffy quietly. So the whole time you're listening to this, you're gonna just hear me slapping and chomping and sucking away on these things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That one's a flat out filling puller. They all are. You have to kind of make them warm, hold them in your hand, put them in oh. your pocket. Okay, talk amongst yourself. Because it's cold inside here and they get hard. I'm going to be out of it for a minute. <laughs> well, the kind you pick, the caramel seems to be the gooeyest. Gooey? This thing's brick hard. Yeah. Well, you hold one in your hand till you're ready. It's not going to help the one in my mouth. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Well. Oh. Say hi to Patrick, who's I can't. sick today. Everybody send him hi. <laughs> Everybody get him <them> hi. <laughs> I get you over all kinds of ailments. Oh, my gosh, the pop-ups. I'm at... Uh, readersdigest.com and it's just as bad as the news organization website so it's just a new pop-up every 30 seconds Hmm. yes patrick is sick so he's out today which sucks because it's trick-or-treat um i want to say trick-or-treat this evening but we don't do that anymore so it's trick-or-treat this afternoon so i tried to make this a bit of a special episode but with patrick being sick we had to kind of change things on the fly so i'm afraid it might be a bit watered down but I hope wow. not. Wow. My, my self-esteem is just going. I was talking topic-wise, but if you want to go ahead and take it personal, I guess that's an option. Uh, one thing I am going to do is talk about, I always like, everything I do, I have I do with music. Everything. I won't go into the list of things I do with music, but um, one of the things, I do have a rather large uh, Halloween playlist. Now, these are not all halloween songs you know like mass monster mash and things like that this is just a lot of normal music that kind of either has a creepy sound to it or maybe a lyrical content that could be halloween ish and then i i think i have some regular normal songs thrown in this as well this it, it basically i have a folder that you could just copy and paste throw it on a flash drive and then it would play i think for three and a half hours or something like that and I just take all the, took all the songs and just made a list out of everything that was in that folder. And I will say before I start this list, there is a couple of songs that I discovered a little too late are not on the list, and they should be. One that pops off the top of my head would be Oingo Boingo, Dead Man's Party. That should be played at any Halloween party ever. The only problem is, for some reason, it wasn't in the folder, so it didn't get on the list, so I'm telling you verbally now to get this list i'm going to read off probably most of it unless it gets dragging on too much you can go to our website ohowgripe.com go to listen to episodes and write it underneath the um the tab bar the menu Uh, it says pdf click on that and you'll instantly download the list what you do with it is up to you and as always i welcome any and all scrutiny so on to which of course i don't have let me get it, because I'm unprepared, as always. <coughs> I am hello. Okay, here we go. So here's a Halloween list. Click on that. I just got it straight from a, the website. Are you ready for this, dear? Yes, I'm ready. Because it's five pages. Okay. <laughs> I just drink my coffee. Yep. Have some taffy, so we can hear you slapping over there. All right, now these are in alphabetic order because that's how computers work. All right, first one, and I guess the reason it's first is because it's in quotations. Or not quotations. What do you call those? Parentheses? What are those? I can't see it from here. Well, then don't worry about it. Parentheses, yes. Okay, so maybe that's why because it's a symbol, not a word. But the first one is Don't Fear the Reaper from Blue Oyster Cult. Now, I'm going to rip these off nice and quick if I don't get them all screwed up. Okay, so just going to go on. Okay, 2 a.m. from Adrian Marcel. If I said that right, seven shots from Volbeat, 1200 Mushroom Head, a Dying Machine, Tremonti, a Warrior's Call, Volbeat, a Welcome Burden, Disturbed, Aerials from System of a Down, Airplane Mode from Bones, Airplane Mode Part 2 from B.O.B., Alive, P.O.D., Alive from Sia, All Hollows Eve from Typo Negative. A lot of this is going to be metal. It's just, that's just, you're just going to have to come to grips with that. I'm okay. Metal owns Halloween. 
It's you mean just, like Toby Keith didn't make a no, Halloween song? Even if he did, no one listens to it. I don't care what anyone says. You can lie Wayne all you Newton? want. Wayne Newton don't have a Halloween song? You know, have you seen his face lately? <laughs> He's like living Halloween all the time. Um, but no. Now, there are a lot of hip-hop songs on this because hip-hop likes to sample and they have a lot of creepy stuff. And I think, ooh, that's a neat song. Uh, but yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Let's just focus and be honest. Uh, Halloween belongs to hip hop and, and metal. There's, I mean, you got Kiss, uh, Alice Cooper, Marilyn Manson. You know, all these bands that do all this stuff. Pink, even Pink Floyd with their lasers. Okay, I know Pink Floyd is not metal, but hard rock, rock, pop rock, metal. Okay, so where was I? Uh, Alive. All, uh, all of me from Drake. Amish Paradise, Weird Al, Angels on the Balcony from Blondie, Angry Chair, Alice in Chains, Animal, Kirsha, 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 I may have said that wrong, uh, Baby Got Back from Sir Mix a Lot, Bad Guys, Billy Ellish, Beast of Burden, Rolling Stones, Bertha Butt Boogie from the Jimmy Castor Bunch, uh, Black and White, Three Dog Night, uh, Black Beatles, uh, Rye Sermert, oh man, I can't say that. He's a rapper. Sorry, everyone. Uh, Black Sabbath, typo negative, and any Black Sabbath song in there as well. I don't know why Black Sabbath didn't make this list. It should have, but this is Black Sabbath from typo negative. Black number one from typo negative. Uh, Blinded by the Light, Manford Man. Uh, Blood and Fire from typo negative. Blood from Muzzy, or Muzzy. I may have said that wrong. Uh, Bottle and a Gun from Hollywood Undead. Break the Bank, uh, Schoolboy Q. Christian woman from typo negative. It's not all typo negative, by the way. That does thin out. This is again. This is alphabetical order. Circle from Ghost. Uh, click from Keanu West, Jay Z, and Big Sean. Close my eyes forever from uh, Ozzy and Lita Ford. Come through. H E R or her. I don't know how that's spelled. Uh, computers from Rowdy Rebel. Duh. Cover me in gold from Sleep Machine. Desperation Samba from Jimmy Buffett, Divinity from Amorphous, uh, Down, Moto Grader, and Drag Me Down, Tonic, Dragon the Line, Tommy Jones, East, 1999, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Eat It from Weird Al, and you can have Michael Jackson in there too, I don't know why Michael Jackson isn't on this list, Envy Me from Callboy, Air Buddy from Lil Wayne, or Little Baby, I'm sorry, Little Baby, Everything You Want, Vertical Horizon, Fat, Weird Al, uh, Fear of the Dark from Maiden, uh, for Iron Maiden for those of you who don't know, Fiction, Dreams and Digital from Orgy, uh, Flex, Polo G, Forever May Not Be Long Enough from Live, Free from UPO, From the Pinnacle to the Pit Ghost, uh, Fuck Me from Maggie A Step, oh yeah, that's a song, uh, Get Your Freak On, Missy Elliott, Godzilla, Blue Oyster Cult, Got the Wrong Foot Amputated from Bob Rivers, uh, that's a parody of... Anyways, a Hallelujah Goat from Vol- Volbeat, Halloween from Mad- Mattis- Mastodon, sorry, ha- Haunted from Typo Negative, Have a Cigar, Pink Floyd, Hell of a Night from Schoolboy Q, Hell, Disturbed, Voodoo, Medicine Man from Aerosmith, or Hoodoo Voodoo, Medicine Man, Aerosmith, I Fought the Law from Sonny Curtis, I See Fire, Ed Sheeran, I Wonder Why, Dion and the Belmonts, love that song, it's old as dirt, but I love that song. Ishwill from Romstein. Uh, I E A I O. <laughs> Set that right from System of a Down. Uh, it's just a bunch of letters. I E A I A I O. System of a Down. I'm No Angel. Greg Allman Band. I'm Only Happy When It Rains from Garbage. I'm Supposed to Die Tonight. 50 Cents. In the Blood. Better Than Ezra. Infected. Bad Reunion or Bad Religion. Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse you. Um, and f- I've got fire on it from Linnets, Loons, Lunets. I don't know how, there's no T in it. I keep putting the T in it. Anyways, L-U-N-I-Z. I'm sorry if I can't pronounce that right. I'm stupid. Jizz in my pants from the Lonely Island. Junkhead from, uh, Alice in Chains. Just dropped in to see what condition my condition is from the first edition or Kenny Rogers. Either one. I mean, Kenny Rogers was the singer for first edition. So however you want to do it. Uh, keep it in the fam. Yella Beezy. Whatever. Uh, Kentucky Fried Blues from Nazareth. Killers. Iron Maiden. Knockdown Walls. Tonic. Lucini's Juice. Live. Let's Get Retarded. The Black Eyed Peas. Little Bit of Soul from the Music Explosion. Locomotive Breath. Jeff Roll Toll. 
Look Away, Hootie and the Blowfish, Low Life, Future, Low, Florida, Florida, sorry, Magic Touch, Aerosmith, Mama Told Me Not to Come, Three Dog Night, Memories Back Then, T.I., Midnight Mover, Accept, that's a great song, Missionary Man, Rhythmics, even better song, Molly from T Tiga, 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 oh, sorry, I guess I'm not gangster enough, Monster from Disturbed, Morning After Dark from Timberland, Mr. Roboto Sticks, Murders in the Rug Morgue, oh my god, Murders in the Rug Morgue, I can't say that, Iron Maiden, we all know from the first album, My Girlfriend's Girlfriend, Typo Negative, My Songs, Know What You Did in the Dark, Fallout Boy, Nightmare from Avenged Sevenfold, No Church and Wild, Jay-Z, No Sleep Tonight, Shine Down, On the Turn of Wave, Pink Floyd, Painted Black, Rolling Stones, Paranoid, Ty Dolla Sign, Pet Cemetery from the Ramones, uh, Pillar of Division from Live, Plowed, Sponge, love that song. Precious Things, Tori Amos, love Tori Amos. Uh, Prison Bitch from Bob and Tom. Push It from Static X, I love Static X. Radioactive from Kiss or Gene Simmons. Technically, it's Gene Simmons. It was when they all four did their own um, individual albums, but I just put Kiss because that's easier. But Gene Simmons, Radioactive. Rain on a Scarecrow, John Mellencamp, When I Die, Alice in Chains, Raptor. Blondie, Rats, Ghost, Rescue Me, Buck Cherry, uh, Roll Them Bone from Five Finger Death Punch, Run from Sleep Machine, Running with the Devil, Van Halen, Running from an Angel, Hootie and the Blowfish, Two Bands Running from Two Different Things, Sad Man's Tongue, Volbeat, See My Tears, um, uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Oh, crap. Um, I can't say that because it's German. Um, I'm just going to spell it because I actually don't know how to pronounce this song. I've been listening to it for years. It's from Rammstein. It's uh, C-E-H-N-S-U-C-H-T. Yeah, I'm not even going to try it. She Builds Quick Machines from uh, Velvet Revolver. She Knows J. Cole. Ship of Fools, Robert Plant. Shock to the System, Billy Idol. Show Me, Kid Inc. Sister Havana from Urge Overkill, Seether from Velvet Revolver, Smooth Criminal, Alien Ant Farm, and the Michael Jackson version works as well. Somebody to Love, Jefferson Airplane, Spooky Classics. Okay, it's either IV or it's a Roman numeral, four. Um, classics, four. Oh, yeah, I guess it makes sense because it was four of them. Okay, anyways. Uh, Square Hammer from Ghost, Stay the Night, Zed, Still Counting, Volbeat, Stone, Sleep Machine, Studio, Schoolboy Q, Such a Night, Elvis, Sun Doesn't Rise, Mushroom Head, Sunshine from Vertical Horizon, and Superhuman from Chris Brown. On to the second to the last page. <sighs> Superstition, Stevie Wonder, Survivor, Spir Survival, Spirit Animal. Sweet Dreams are made of this from the Arrhythmics and the Marilyn Manson version works. I just really like the Arrhythmics. Uh, swimming Pools, Kendrick Lamar. <sighs> Was it Sewing Life Away? Machine Gun Kelly. I think it's Sewing. I can't read. Sympathy for the Devil, Rolling Stones. Take Me Home Tonight from Eddie Money. Take the Crown, Ultra Bridge. Uh, talking Body. What? Tl Tlovlo. Whatever. Pick a name that I can read. The Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd's Greatest Hits, uh, Sia, or Sia, however you say her name. The Healer from Glenn Tipton. That's not Judas Priest. That's Glenn Tipton's solo album. The Healer's great song. The Holy One, Sleep Machine, The Humpty Dance, Digital Underground. The King is Dead, but the Queen is Alive from Pink. Uh, the Look, Roxanne, or Roxette, I'm sorry. Number of the Beast from Iron Maiden. The Truth, Spirit Animal, The Way I Are. Timberland, Timberland and Carrie Hilson. Sorry, having a uh, mucus moment there. <clears throat> uh, Thick from Tonic. This is America from Childish Gambino. This is the new shit, Marilyn Manson. Time has come today. The Chamberlain Brothers. Time Bomb from Pink. Too Much from Drake. Toxicity from System of a Down. True Colors. Phil Collins. Try Pink. Turn Up the Music. Chris Brown. Turn, turning Wheel from Sonny Landreth. Uh, Two-Step, Dave Matthews. Sorry, I'm having a uh, nose-running event here. Uh, Two-Step from Dave Matthews. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Ugly from Sass Jordan. Undead, Hollywood undead. Uh, Viva Las Vegas from ZZ Top. Waiting for the light to change from Tonic. Waking Lions from Pop Evil. Walking on the Sky, Alter Bridge 
Uh, Walls Talking from Kevin Gates. Love that song. Uh, Warehouse from Dave Matthews Band. We will be burning, Sean Paul. Welcome to the Family Avenge Sevenfold. What are... Wait, you, what you are from Dave Matthews Band, Whispers in the Dark, Mumford and Sons, White Room Cream, Wings of a Butterfly, Him or His Internal Majesty, love that song too, with a little hope from friends, Joe Cocker, Wolf Moon, Typo Negative, Wood from Alice in Chains, Rothschild from Iron Maiden, and You Ain't Got Nothing, Little Wayne, You Need Me from Tantrum. You never heard of Tantrum? Most of you haven't. It's a 70s band. And they were real popular in this area, like Cleveland, Michigan type area. They put out a couple albums that I know of. And uh, it's a funny story. I'm just going to interrupt this. I have an uncle that I have two uncles that were in DJs back in the 70s and the 80s and all that. And uh, one of my uncles used to bring us cutouts, which are the record labels would send these albums to the record uh, to the radio stations. And they would say, play songs off of this. This is a new album, this new band, blah, blah, blah. And then once they either used them or didn't use them, they threw them away, but he would bring them home to us. So my brother and I would get stacks of albums. One of those albums was Tantrum. And, uh, and when we were kids, we really didn't know what we were listening to, didn't know much about it. But years later, I remembered it and downloaded it from Amazon. And I'm telling you, it is a killer fucking album. These guys were great. And unfortunately, they were, I hate to say it, but they're older. So they're really not around anymore, as far as I know. But if you get the chance to download an album from Tantrum, and you know it's got three chick singers, and I think it's like, uh, was it like seven members? They're really, 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 really good. I actually like them a lot. Young and Dumb from Body Withington. Withington, I'm sorry. Young Blood from The Naked and the Famous. Your Own Way from Albert Cummins. And Zombie Zoo from Tom Petty. There's the list. And you can download this list from the Ohio Grape website. Free charge, as always. Everything we do is free. If you like it, great. If not, cool. Let me know what else should be on it. Again, it was a couple songs that I thought right off the top of my head that should have been on it, wasn't on it. I'm, I'm not perfect. So, <clears throat> seeing that you know just a smidge more about music than I do, okay. How did what was the criteria for your list? It's either songs that the lyrical content kind of is creepy or is about Halloween or a ghost or soul or something like that. Oh, okay. Or the music itself has to have kind of a creepy or a suspenseful it's one or the other. And then there are some songs in there that are very borderline. Songs you say, what? Like Tantrum. Tantrum really isn't a creepy or Halloween song. But if it's a huge playlist because you're supposed to just, like I said, I just put it on. And you got to have normal songs mixed in there. You know, not every single song is supposed to be creepy and or of Halloween. But if you listen to it, you could certainly see how it would mesh. Like it kind of blends in, especially when it comes to computers. What I do is I usually organize the songs per song title and not by number. Uh, it was on the album or by the artist. So if you arrange it by song title, it tends to automatically randomize everything. Okay. Yeah. I just, I wasn't sure because some would, of them were very obvious to me. Yes. Well, and yeah. other ones, like the Alter Bridge, I wasn't getting a Halloween, but they're. You would have to hear ghosts. it. Like, well, I know the songs. Right, right. I know. But what I'm saying is a lot of times they'll they'll kind of blend in. Like it's got that same vibe. It's mm -hmm. either it's either a beat by vibe, nod your head, or it could be just like, it just kind of blends in. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah. So, but you know, you don't have to agree. You could easily well, say I one of those where songs. You got the criteria because I wasn't seeing Alter Bridge Walk the Sky as a Halloween type song. You, yeah, I'd have to play it. If you if you listen to it, well, you could I'd say, well, okay. Next time it comes up. I'll... But yeah. you should have also, you got Jimmy Bump at the Samba. Yeah, that one's okay. But you didn't get Vampires, Mummies, and the Holy Ghost. That's the, that's the cute uh, Halloween song. I actually ever heard of that song. Oh. Well, you will have to check it out. Yeah. Vampires, so there you go. and the Holy Ghost. So there you go. There's another one you can throw on there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but yeah, you know what? That's a good example. Jimmy Buffett. Doom, 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 ba -doom, doom, doom, uh -huh. doom. I mean, that's that's kind of Halloween-ish. Well, yeah, guess. well, I get that one. I was missing the uh, altar bridge till you said you were throwing in stuff with ghosts and souls and stuff like that. Well, it's... it's it they have be, a lot of that. It's a lot of... I used a lot of stuff. And like I said, like, some songs really have nothing to do with either one of those. It's just it could be mm -hmm. it meshes well with the vibe of the rest of the songs. And don't forget, when you're playing background music, most of it people don't hear. 
You know, or right. if you're in a car and just driving, you can hear a song that's not necessarily got a creepy vibe to it and be like, oh, this is fine. Mm -hmm. So not every song is, you know, about, because if it was, if, if I was going to do every song that is about Halloween or it's about creepy, then it would be the 16 that everyone knows. Mm -hmm. Monster Mash, Oingo Boingo. Uh, I can't, God, that's, I can't even. Well, I don't know that one. You don't know Dead Man's Party? Uh -uh. You would if you heard it. Probably. But anyways, oh, Probably. Weird Science from Oingo Boingo is another mm -hmm. one. You know, stuff like that. It would be the same six songs. This one was a much more larger list that you can have playing in the background somewhere. By the time the list starts over, you would not even remember the first song. That was the kind of the point. Okay. But, you know, hey, like I said, you don't have to agree. Did you put that on a flash drive for Trigger Treat? No. Do you want me to? Maybe. Because it would just be music. Okay. Well, well, maybe. You usually get your creepy music going. Yes, I built a song out of sound effects and the tail end of Monstrous Clock from Ghost. Oh. Quite proud of it. I play it. I think I played it three years in a row, yeah. No. A trigger treat, yep. Mm -hmm. This would be year four, I believe. Well, it is tradition, so we should well, do Yes, it. we don't mess with tradition in this family. <laughs> Speaking of which... <laughs> So, what do you got? Because I'm going to be busy here for a second. Oh, I'm, All right. I'm going to do what you said. I'm going to hold this sucker in my yeah, hand. Yeah, just a few seconds. Well, I had an interesting thing because uh, while I get bored at lunch, I illegal. Well, you know, you got an hour for lunch. I don't go anywhere. I don't go out to a restaurant. I eat, you know, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich or the rice aroni or whatever. So, I illegally get on our computer at work and usually just read the MSN homepage. Uh, cause they, you know, cybersecurity and blockage and all that. That's about all I can get to. But what was interesting just the other day, probably two, three days ago, it said a local man had won $1 million on a scratch off lottery ticket. Damn. And what made me think even more is it was at a gas station about a mile from my house. See, I told you it works. Yeah, that works great. Put it in your hand and warm it up before you eat it. So I read the article. It was on Fox 8 News. Because they have Cleveland News picked it up. But, so, there are. It's a $50 ticket. And, you know, we're not overly extravagant. We are middle income. If I read also on the MSN homepage the average media median income for this area and for Ohio in general. And we're, we're right there in the middle or, you mm -hmm. know, I don't want to say we're We're as above, average as but, you can get. Yes. Blue collar, baby. So, you know, we got a house. We got car payments. I actually still have my kids' student loan debt. So. Yeah, we're in debt. <laughs> That's how so, we're living. We owe. Anyway, so uh, we don't. I don't often buy lottery tickets. I, I leave up to my sister, but we often at holidays and birthdays, everybody throws lottery tickets in. So there's this $50 lottery game. I guess it's called Billion. And some of the top prizes are a million dollars a year for the rest of your life. Oh, my gosh. Right? So this guy, he had a scratch-off ticket. He won just flat out $1 million. Uh-huh. And I, so he decided, I guess, when you win, I don't know what the uh, amount is, but there's a, a maximum top that you can say, oh, I'll take the cash payout. Like, if you win... The mega millions and all that stuff they offer. You can just take a cash payout and get the money today that the lottery would have to invest to pay you out the full amount over how many years it is. Right. I'm not up on the lottery since I don't work at the gas station. But anyway, this guy, can you imagine? You take a lottery ticket home and you scratch it off and you win a million dollars. That would be my last day on earth. First thing I would think is, oh, I must have made a mistake. It's not real. This is fake. It, it's a joke. <laughs> I, Throw it away. No, no. They have machines at the lottery store. You can usually the ones I go to the gas stations, you can just walk up and stick your ticket under this like barcode reader and it'll tell you if you want or not. So I would probably do that sometime late at night when there's nobody else around at the gas station. So anyway, this guy wins a million dollars. I'm sure he had to go up by the airport to the lottery commission, cash it in. So he decided to take the cash option. Mm -hmm. So on his $1 million ticket, the cash that they would have had to invest to pay him off was 500 grand. So right there, you're down 500 grand, which is still a lot of money. Now, what does, what con, why do they down $500? 
well, they're down $500,000. When you take a cash payout, it's the amount of money the lottery would have to invest today to pay you out that money over the how many years. Oh. So, you know, you get interest on that money. So the lottery would invest $500,000, and then they would have enough to pay you out the million dollars over, I don't know, it didn't say how many years. That's crazy. So $500,000 can turn into a million dollars in a year's time. Yes, and my brother once told me if I ever won like the Mega Millions or Super Lotto or whatever they are, take the cash option because we could probably invest the money better than the lottery and make more money in the long run. Yeah, but a million dollars a year, who cares? I mean, can you spend a million dollars in a year? Yes. <laughs> well, you're better than me because I, I wouldn't Sorry. know how to spend a million dollars in a year. Well, you got to think about two. A hundred grand is easy, but a million dollars? The state of Ohio, like when we get a bonus check or something like that, they t- get taxed like 33 to 35%. They get taxed more than your regular income. So already if you win a million dollars, you're going to get what? 600,000? Well, yes, because when my sister won 100,000, she got... 60,000. Yeah, so they took like 40 per, just under 40% in taxes. Yeah. Still right. 600,000 a year. Well, yeah, Fuck. I could retire on that, but yes, yes, I could spend that. You buy houses in a few different states, there's okay. 60, Here's 600, the thing. 600,000 already. Houses. Well, yeah, you get one here to come visit the family. You get one house in New Mexico to go in the winter and that and you might want a house somewhere else. Okay. You want a house for your mother. You want to buy a house, a big enough thing that we can all live in together. Well, I'm no, hold on, hold on, hold seasonal on. Seasonal places. On. Don't say it like that. I don't want to be some compound or some con- whatever thing. I want to buy like an apartment building. So we all have our own houses or, or our homes just together. So if something happens, I'm not 30 minutes away. Well, you can do that too yes. because on that show I'm watching – their uh, mother's dying, so the son, who's rich, is building them a compound, and he was just pointing out each individual family. You know, he's got siblings, so each sibling in their family has a wing mm. of the compound. But anyway, I'm talking about vacation spots. Uh, I can't really think offhand, but, you know, we'd want one here because family's here. We would want... One in New Mexico, maybe Santa Fe, somewhere nice like that, which they get snow. So you could have one in Santa Fe, one in Southern, but anyway, stuff like that. So yeah, 600000 a year I could spend. Then you buy cars, you buy family, you pay off all their bills, buy them things, you know. But anyway, so the guy scratches off a million dollar ticket. He takes a cash option. So he gets paid out $500,000. Here you go. Uh-huh. Well, the state of Ohio takes taxes, so he ended up getting $360,000 in cash. He lost $700,000. Now, What if he regrets it? I don't know. What if he's 65 years old and retired and his house is paid for, his cars are paid for? He just did, you know, a lot of people we know, I know your parents did it. Before they retired, they went and fixed up all their house. They bought, you know, new roofs, new air conditioning. Maybe the guy don't need any. I know half of my family, they'd probably retire with, well, they're all retired now. But they would retire with $360,000. Yeah, well, I could too. Six hundred grand. I mean, we've no three hundred and six. That's what he ended up. Oh, getting. for a, a single payment, three hundred sixty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, no, I couldn't retire on that. I could pay the house off and all oh, cars. Oh, right, because they get he gets that paid out over so many years. He gets forty two thousand dollars a year. So That's even the what, cast option, you don't get it in one. Yeah, big Yeah, I thought you did, but I just read this article on the Ohio Lottery website today that he did not. Uh, he gets it paid out $42,000 a year. Yeah, well, hmm. might decide to, yeah. Maybe. I don't think anybody option. could live on $42,000 a year. Well, yes, people do. That's that's considered an average income around. Here. I don't think so, not anymore. The last time I looked at MSN, the Ohio, the average household income was $56,000 a year. 
I mean, it's okay. So, uh, hey, I'm just saying. That's. Oh, my article went away. I had it on Fox 8. Oh, I know these websites are awful. Yeah, because all of a sudden it's talking about crash sites. But anyway, if I can't find it, I do remember that he... um. So I, here's a good question. What is like the best thing? I mean, because when it comes to winning the lottery, most people only win once in their lifetime and they very rarely win a no, lot. Oh, it seems like people are lucky. I've read of several people that win, you know, decent sized jackpots, hundred grand, two or three times. Mm, must be nice. Yeah. Anyways, um, but like, like my, I remember my parents used to always say, if we win the lottery, we're immediately going to put it into a trust. So nobody knows who it is. And, and then you just live off the trust. And I kind of don't know anything about any of that. Well, you can do that because, um, that's what my brother always told me. If we ever won the lottery, invest it yourself. We can invest it better than the lottery can. I don't think I could. I don't, well, I don't know, Jack you, Well, poop. you get a first thing you do, if I ever won the Mega Million Dollars, and I only say that because I play it when it's like $480 million or it got up to almost a billion, you go to the lottery agency and they'll ask you, you can remain anonymous so nobody knows. First thing you do is go get a financial advisor, somebody that you trust. I have one in mind. <laughs> I knew somebody, an accountant or... He was the chief financial officer forever. He knows about investment. So mm -hmm. I call him and have him invested. I put some in a trust fund for my kid, who's actually an adult now. So we just give her money. I have. Then the one thing I don't like about it is I'm paying 40% taxes on this. Say I win $100 million. Mm -hmm. And then I go and give my sister $5 million. She's got to pay taxes, gift tax on that. I'm sure there's a way around it. If well, you... that's that'd be my first thing is find a way around it. Yeah. Because that's... Like a trust or... I know, I know I'm just saying. I'm just I don't know. Something. But that's awful. If I well, win that's... money and get taxed... Well, that's like when you buy a car. You've already paid tax on a car and somebody buys it from you, then they got to pay tax again on And you got to pay taxes on the tags every yeah. year. Yeah. it's a racket. Yes. Some states don't do that, though, but I don't know which states. Some states, once a car is sold, the taxes are paid. They don't have to pay taxes again. But it doesn't matter. I know. So anyway, so yeah, this guy. And I thought it, I thought it was neat because it was sold right down the road from our house. Let me see if the repository says anything different about it. Uh, I doubt you'll get Fox to the repository. One. Well, there's a pitch. Oh. That's massive. Well, that's somebody else. Well, here's somebody else in Maslin that wanted at the Maslin Mini Mart. Because the one I read about on Fox 8, this was in September. The one I saw that wanted at the Speedway was just a few days ago. Oops. So now we're advertising the Speedway. No. All right, anyway, so... <laughs> But what I would do, scratch off tickets in general, and we just, I did a couple little information. So they last about a year. They have a closing date, of which point I don't know if you can ever find out. But if you have winning tickets, redeem them because they do close six weeks after. Yes, but you do have some time to do some research. 180 days from game closing, they scratch off. So, like, we got one for Christmas, and it's still sitting up on the table. We haven't went and cashed our $10 in, which now I'm thinking about adding $40 to and winning a, uh, buying a $50 billion tickets because there are a few, there's a few remaining tickets of... <clears throat> $1.5 million, which you get six hundred k a year for 25 years. There's still two of those left in Ohio. Yeah, I was going to say retire. the entire state of Ohio, though. Oh, yeah. Probably in some gas station in some... Oh, here's what it is. Yeah, a million dollars. You get forty k a year for 25 years. There's six more of those, and this is wow. including the one he just won. Yeah. Yeah, and they have a one in four odds. It's the 50th anniversary Ticket. So if you spend four hundred dollars, you might win. Yes. Hmm. But 
That's a lot $200. of money. $200. Oh, $250. $250. Well, okay, that doesn't make me something. wrong, though. If you spend 400 you have a pretty good chance of winning. Yes, and the lowest prize is $100. That'd be eight tickets. Yeah. But anyway. God, that would be so insulting. You spend $400 and you win 100 of it back. Yeah. Well, the point of it is it's a $50 ticket and the lowest you can win is $100. Yeah, well. So, but those are few and far between, but they've been coming out. Last Christmas, they had $50 tickets too because we partook of one or two of them. But they are some. The next game's closing, it said, was in January, and they're the Christmas ones from last year, so. You get about almost a year, but if you have any sitting around in your drawer, take it to the store and make sure it's still Yeah, we need good. to do that. Or you can check online. God, we suck at that. Why what? don't we, we – they, they just become decoration. They become part of whatever they're sitting on. Well, there's – well, maybe I'll take it to the place who won. No, the chances of them having another win are probably few and far between. Yeah. But – but that was all I had. I just thought it was neat that the guy won. Right you need to find the, the unlucky store. The store where nobody wins. Well, I tell you what, I never win at the lucky lottery store. Yeah, well. We go there every year. We mostly win down. My sister buys them in Coshocton County, and they seem to have a lot of winners. Okay, I'm done talking about Oh, that's a shame because I was really just sitting here listening to you. I know. But, okay. Well, we don't want to push the lottery too much. Talk about gambling then and addiction and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there's no smart way to do it. Yeah. All right, so I have Reader's Digest here. It's supposed to have 20 stories, but these stories are long and involved, and I decided I don't read well enough to do that. You should have just... brought your movie on. We could have plugged your Halloween movie. Uh, why? I'm not giving it away to everybody. I tried that with the Christmas movie. I gave 20 copies of that movie to co-workers who told me they wanted it. Oh, can I have one? And a year later, did you ever watch my Christmas movie? No, I never watched it. You have, I mean, look, if you watched it and said, yeah, I mean, what do you want me to it, it, Come on. I mean, I appreciate you giving it to me, but it sucked. I'd have been like, okay, hey, no problem. You know, not for everybody. But to take a copy that cost me money to put together and then just never even be bothered to watch it. That, well, I, that's okay. just that's just kind of rude. Like I don't know if I can handle that. Like, well, it, maybe what I meant was, if you're looking for Halloween stories, you could have taken some from the movie. Yeah, because your movie told all about Halloween and the origins. Well, like that, I know, but that's not really a story. Mm. Do you have any stories from when you were a kid? Anything you did? That no, different? I was a boring kid. <laughs> I went to Catholic grade school. Oh, we wore the plastic little uniforms every year. We'd come home. Trigger treat was on Halloween night after dark. So we would come home from school, quick do homework, quick eat our dinner. Then if it was too cold, like it's probably going to be today, I think it's only 40 degrees out. Yeah, but that's not a bad thing. That that helps kids to actually dress up. I know, but my mother always made me wear a coat on the oh, outside yeah. of my princess outfit because I was always a princess. You were always the same thing? Yeah, but I got a new one every year, the oh. little plastic clothes and the little plastic mask with see, the crown. See, parents need to... I told you it was boring. And then, they need to support imagination, not suppress it. Yeah. We did Catholic school, so they raised money for UNICEF. So I was the only one of my friends that went to the Catholic school. And we had to carry around that little milk carton thing looking around. And you had to say, trigger treat for UNICEF. And then they'd, but they always filled it up. Yes. You didn't have to say that. I know, but you could have been like, look. Hey, I was a good kid, Catholic school. I never got in trouble, never did anything bad. Anyway, so then I would go back to school the next day and my little milk container would be full of pennies and change. And everybody was happy. So you went trick or treating for the church. Well, I got candy, too. Yeah, but went you quick. went pandering for the cat. That's evil. <laughs> Fuck. That's terrible. If you go trick-or-treating, kids, make sure to pay me. Well, oh. it was a different time then, because I'll tell you what, all those people that gave me change, they had a little bowl of pennies and change sitting there right by the candy, so they were prepared. It's not like they didn't know it was coming and they had to go digging through their wallets they had the change sitting right there 
Could you imagine trying to pull that shit today? Well, I was just trick thinking or treat, about and that. can I have some loose change for the church? What if we uh, take our coin jar out there and give away a couple of pennies instead of candy? Today? We'll get twice as many kids next year. No, you think? Oh yeah. What if, kids won't know what to do with five cents and no, but the parents say, "I'll take that. I'll buy some gum with that." We'll get more adults with pillowcases. Eh, trick or treat. Okay, she's done. <laughs> just, that was like a false alarm. Just, yeah, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Single little... <laughs> so delicate I am. Uh-huh. Well, um, my Halloween's much more fun because... I mean, it is because I grew up in a small town and I grew up on a, a dead-end street, a one-way dead-end street. Nobody knew how the hell it got there. Anyways... It's not one way. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> While we, I don't even know what to say. To that anyway. So it was a it was a dead end street. So there was the amount of houses on that street, but then there were houses. You know, once you go in the backyard, to backyard. So it was it could have been a big neighborhood if if you were allowed to really walk and and kind of wander around. So the older you got, the more further you were allowed to go. So the older you got, the more candy you got. But more importantly, we still trick or treated at night. And where I grew up, there wasn't, there was a lot of walking through people's yards and then going, you know, past one house into the backyard of another house. And, and you think, oh, that's stupid. But it, it wasn't because it was, you can't really. Well, yeah, we went through yards. Yeah, you yeah. can't really see at night. So someone was tripping all the time. <laughs> and I'm telling you, looking back, it was a whole nother level of just comedy and or being, you know, because you're walking along and you're, and you're old enough to be on your own, like eight, nine, ten Oh. You know, so your, your mom stays home at that point because my brother was five years older than me. So when I was, you know, 10, he was 15. And kind well, that's of, too old to trigger treat. Right. So anyways, so mom just didn't go out anymore. She stayed home and handed out candy. We were allowed to kind of roam around. And another thing is small neighborhoods, especially back then, um, every mother looked out for every child. Right. So if I did something, you know, like beat up somebody or peed on something, my mom would have heard about it from one of the other mothers. Mm-hmm. So... And that's kind of something that I, I think we're lacking in society today. Nowadays, you see a kid screw up, and then you go discipline that kid. I'm not going to beat the crap out of him, but just yell at him. Next thing you know, you got some wannabe dad pretending to be Mr. Boncho yes. at your door, telling you not to discipline <clears throat> his kid. You know, yes. it, they they look for reasons to be victims. Everyone's a victim now. So instead of being a parent, they use their kid as a way to be a victim. Uh, all in the fear that they could go too far and actually like hit your kid or something. Anyways, but that wasn't the way it was back then back then if i screwed up real bad i could have got a whooping from anybody in that neighborhood so i knew not to screw around because someone was going to see it and i get in trouble so for the most part we were on there you know but you get like four or five kids dressed up you know, there's always one kind of lagging behind step in a big gopher hole and you go down and then you hear ah and turn around and the kid's gone because he's now blended in with the weeds and the car, you know, and then if he pops up, it just scared the crap out of you just because it was a, you know, surprise. But so that was kind of fun. And I don't then, think we ever tripped in yards. Well, you see. Well, you were out in the country. More. Yeah. I was just in a yeah, there regular was two, neighborhood, no sidewalks. There were just. two house plots in my, on the street that I grew up that was not approved for septic. So they mm-hmm. turned into just being fields. So we're talking three quarters of an acre field, and I had two of them, one right beside my house and then one almost directly across the street. Uh, And that, excuse you, and that always kind of added to, you know, because sometimes you had to go through that field in order to, now they're much more grown up today. Like when I was a kid, it was just overgrown grass and some weeds, but now there's a bunch of trees in them, practically small patches of forest. But, you know, we had to cross through them, and it was always a, possum or a skunk or something that would just shoot out of a bush when you got close i mean that kind of stuff scared the crap out of you you would always hear and at night out there we're talking hartville Uh it was quiet so you could hear a kid scream half a mile away i'm not even joking so we'd be kind of scared because we're working ourselves into this fear because it's halloween and halloween's more than just trick-or-treat even though it wasn't halloween it was always like a week before or the weekend before Mm -hmm. But to a kid, it's Halloween and evil's around and you know, demons are right behind every corner. And then you would hear a scream 
that was so distant that you couldn't see anything. You just hear this echoey scream telling you it added a whole nother level to it. And then your bunch of kids without mom, no matter how old you are, you could be 12. That shit still rocks you with the core. And it, it was always the same thing. You, yeah, over the next couple of weeks, you'd find out, who was it that screamed? Oh, that was Tommy. He was with us, and he, he tripped over a rock and bashed his head into the cement and screamed real loud. And he's like, oh, my God, we thought someone got murdered. You know, and it was it was always like that every year. <coughs> and you'd see your neighbors, and sometimes your neighbors would have friends over, and it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Almost every house participated. You go up and you knock on the door, and then out there... Very rarely are the houses level. You know what I mean? One house would be way like down and the next one. So there's always some amount of stairs and you'd be mm-hmm. whooped by the time you got back. And it's just not the same today. No. Now, now since we moved in this neighborhood, all the adults sit at the end of the driveway. So the kids don't even have to walk Which, up there. The one year we didn't, one of the first years that we were here because it was raining. Yeah, oh, that was But terrible. I had to sit by the front door. Yeah. Or the kids wouldn't have came up. There was oh, one, and then they tripped on our sidewalk. Yeah, it was all bad. Yeah, one year was pretty fun. My brother-in-law was here, and he was dressed up, and he would—he was really good at sitting still. So he'd sit in the lawn chair and not move. And then when the kids got real close, like after sitting perfectly still for like three, four minutes, try that. He'd suddenly start moving, and the kids would scream and go everywhere. That was a lot of fun. Oh, that was yeah. And then they came and got him the next year, and they wanted him to go trick or treating with them. Yeah. That boy across the road got older. He only made two kids cry that year, though. But it was sad. He felt bad. He had to undo his mask and everything. And that little girl, man, she did not come back. Yeah, that was great. And then that was daytime. It wasn't even nighttime. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's something about dusk and nighttime all by itself adds a whole nother level to it i don't know how to describe it i know that alliance still trick-or-treats at night i was gonna say some do i think navarre or bolivar may too i think at my niece lives up in cuyahoga falls and i think they still like i don't have a problem with the parents because even when i was a kid when we were little five six mom would go with us because you know Imagine a kid falling a gopher hole, and then he's crying, and all of a sudden he forgets where he is because he can't really see. You know, yet little kids need parents for a multitude of reasons. You know, but when the kids get older, like I said, 9, 10, 11, 12, the moms kind of, you know, they can, I mean, if they trust your kid to get on a bicycle and ride around the neighborhood to go to their friend's house, they could trust them to trick or treat, you know. I don't remember. But everyone nowadays is so convinced that kids will get kidnapped. And I'm sure that happens somewhere to some degree. But I'm just, you know, punishing the entire country. Anyways. Well, the counties voted on it. Yeah, that's true. The county voted long, long time ago. Long time ago. I don't remember my mother ever going with me, but I'm the youngest of seven, so. Well, yeah, you probably had brothers and sisters. Yeah. And yeah, see, my brother wanted nothing to do with to me. take me anywhere. Oh, I'm they sure. They hated to babysit me. My brother wanted nothing, because all his friends were old. Like I said, by the time I was old enough, think about it, when I was six, he was 11. Yeah. 11-year-olds don't want to hang around with little kids. And then, you know, by the time I was 10, he was 15 and probably not even home. He was probably out, because we had mopeds. Uh-huh. My brother got a hand-me-down moped from my uncle. And then by the time I turned 14, I got it. So he was on the road, you know, running around with his little moped going to friends' houses. Anyways, so. But I get it. You know, to a degree, you know, I don't I don't have a problem with the parents, even now, like tonight. I, I don't have a problem with the parents waiting at the end of the That doesn't bother me at all. I just wish it was in evening time because the decorations look better. Yeah, even if it started at 5, three, yeah. right now it's 3 to 5. So Even if it went 5 to 7, it's ba- or even 5 to 6.30, because the first hour is busy and then kids are yeah. somewhere else. We don't get a lot the last hour. So even 5 to 6.30, and it's not dark out. No, but it's, it's a little less light, right, so any kind of lights and decorations just look a little better. Because I think sunset's like 6.30, 6.20. Sometimes. I just think if we went back... To trust in each other a little bit more and a little more public policing. I'm not talking beating kids. I'm not talking screaming or all the shit that everyone does nowadays where they just go completely off the handle and can't control themselves at all. Obviously, we got to fix that first. But some of these smaller neighborhoods. 
Well, a guy that I work with, and he's got young kids, and uh, they're pretty well young. I think the young youngest is a baby, and the oldest one's maybe like nine or ten. He lives in a huge neighborhood, and they do up Halloween, and he said they voted in their neighborhood to do, they trick-or-treat after dark. Yeah. Now, I mean, that's... that's cool. Where's yeah. that at? We talking Canton, Akron? Um, I'm... I don't know. Navarre? No, I don't know. I want to say Canton, but I'm not sure. Yeah. And I don't know where, but I mean, he's the one that built the UFO. Oh. decor, and they do a big party, and he just said the whole neighborhood they got, and us. they do that. I don't know if it's just like a couple blocks, but they still get together and have the block parties. Oh. We used to have block parties. I would love so. my my when I was a kid, my the street I grew up on, I, I believe they had a block or a neighborhood cookout one time. This is just the people that were on the street. Remember, it's a dead end street, so you have houses on one side that go around the top of it and then go down. And uh, one time, I I have such little memory of it, but I just remember being in the street, very very young probably three because that neighborhood was kind of that whole neighborhood was built right. in 77 and in 77 i was three so it couldn't have been i doubt it was in 77 because i don't think all of the houses sold in 77 i think by 78 and 79 the neighborhood was complete but you'd have to ask my parents i have such my, my brother may know um, but i have such a bad memory because don't forget when i was three he was eight and you tend to remember more at mm -hmm. that age uh, but I remember there being a, at least one time, at least one time there was a cookout where somebody brought a grill or multiple grills because I was a kid and we were just all in the street, just playing in the street when all the parents were there drinking beer and, and smoking and, you know, we're evil, <laughs> you know, and enjoying themselves. And then it just stopped. And I don't know why it stopped because again, I was a small child, but. I love the idea of it. Like, I, I would, because we live on a dead end street. Right. And I would love to do that. My gosh, the neighbors are so to themselves. Like, yeah, I know. You know but I, but know. I can't say shit because I am too. I know. But when your parents moved into that neighborhood, they were so young. Mm -hmm. And everybody was moving in at the same time. And yes. I think that makes a big difference. And it was all young couples. Because when I, the how the street I grew up on, you know, the par ever all the parents were my parents' age. And yeah, were more established. Knew it. Everybody knew everybody. Yeah. So those I established think, streets get people moving in and out yeah. randomly. But when a neighborhood gets spawned, well, by the time we moved out, though, people were dying off. So yeah. new people were moving in. So well, that's that's where know. that's the street I grew right. up. That's where it's at now. Yes. Like there's so few. I think there's my parents. There's the Millers and then the Downards, and I think that's it. Right. I think everyone else has moved out or moved away. And I don't, you know, the people on here are friendly, but it's not like you can't really call them friends. Like, you know, my parents did the card parties. Yeah. and yeah, you know, we don't hang out with you anybody. You give away vegetables, and a lot of people hang out in their backyards, so you don't, our backyards don't connect to anybody. Mm -hmm. Where I used to live, the backyards all connected. Nobody had fences, so you could walk back and forth right, to the yeah, houses. Yeah, it's the same way there with with my parents now. Mm -hmm. But we try to remember that the only reason we have a fence is because we have dogs, and I don't want to do right. the work of teaching them where to go. Yes. So even if we were to move into my parents' house, the first thing I'd have to do is have the front backyard fenced in. Oh yeah, can you see? Open the door without looking, and there's they're a deer. gone. Yeah. They're go no, they're no, no. Trust me, I grew up in that house. There are no wild animals oh. out there. There's possums and rabbits and skunks. Well, they would take off after a rabbit. Right, and that's it. I'm telling you, I never saw a deer in that yard the entire time. I, I didn't. If the train tracks keep them away. I think it's just too vast. There's too much open land, and they don't go near yeah. the houses. Well, that's good. Because around it here is, they keep but, building houses, and that's what's yeah. shoving all the deer. I know over. it's good. It's good that the deer get to live in their own little forest area, and they don't get to tromp your and eat your stuff. But to seeing the animals, that that's kind of why I envy the hunters. They get to go out in the forest, and they get to see these. Well, you could these buy animals. an orange jacket and go out and watch them. No, the whole reason I don't hunt is because I don't want to get up at five o'clock in the morning to go sit in a forest. Well, that well maybe you could go at dusk. Yeah. Well, I know Doug at work. He used to go out on his motorcycle in the at dusk in the evening, and the, he had certain spots he'd go out and sit where the deer would come and eat, or probably around a pond or something. Yeah, that's just so much work. I mean, I wouldn't mind if you wanted to move 
and say we didn't have to worry about driving to work, I wouldn't mind moving out to, give me a minute, um, like Marlboro mm-hmm. or like where do we go? What's that small town that we always take um, 224? You know what I mean? You 224? Get, yeah, when you head out west or, or, where, or that's south, whatever direction that goes, you kind of get out of town, like Strasburg or something mm-hmm. like that. There's those smaller areas where there's less industry and more houses and well, I don't, the yards get bigger. Strasburg is all. I don't know. I, or I, Hudson. I'm, I like Hudson. Well, Hudson's north. Anyways. But yeah, moving out into the country where you could get, you know, two or three acres and it's all it's most of it's overgrown and stuff. I wouldn't mind doing that. You know, like you buy an old farm. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily it's got like a hundred acres. I don't think I can afford that no matter what, but just like maybe three acres and they're used to farm over here, but now it's just weeds and, and woods and I would I would enjoy that because I wouldn't necessarily have farm animals, I don't think. Because I'm afraid of the vet bills and stuff like that. But you know, some what wild would you animals do with all the land. It depends. Depends on what. If it's all grass, then I'd probably end Buy up. A goat. Yeah, but if it's like overgrown, like say if we bought the woods behind uh-huh. my house, I would leave it woods and just make it accessible and try to bring some deer and stuff like that. You know, put troughs out there. That well, good. We got five pumpkins to put out there next yeah. week. Yeah, but I, you know, the woods behind our house is not for sale. No. And the guy who owns them is a horribly gigantic douchebag. And acts like everyone's there to cost him money. So we're not allowed in the woods. I mean, we can go in them, but we don't have permission. But anyways, but yes, I, I, because growing up in the country out there with those two fields, and then if we went, uh, took the railroad tracks, you could get even more like in the outback, if you will, because it was all farmland when I was a kid. So, yeah, I mean, that's how we played. My first experience with smoking was smoking pine needles. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was awful. I got so sick. I was a kid. I think like 12. <laughs> makes me cough just thinking about it. Oh, it was awful. Just stupid. Kids do stupid shit. And we took the railroad tracks. That would have been, what direction is that? Um, I think it was north into Hartville. But before we got to Hartville, there's a lot of wooded and farm areas. So there's no one. There's just these big open fields, you know, and trees. And we had this genius idea. We took a piece of paper. And we put pine needles in there, rolled it up, lit it, and smoked oh. it. And both of us got so fucking sick. And it was that learning, you know, hey, let's not ever do that again. But anyways, so. But things were different back then, unfortunately. And I, I do think the kids are missing out. But at the same time, they don't know what they're missing. So maybe... You know, someone's going to someone's gonna be like, would yeah. you just shut up about it? I mean, like, I can't help it. I want people to have a good childhood the way I had a good childhood. And parents probably like it more on Sunday afternoons. They don't, you know, like yes. I said, that's, that's I used another to thing. run home from school and my mother would quick feed us. Yes, I know. And I get it. I get it. But I also think that every, I, th- I believe in degeneration. Every generation is a little worse than the one before it. And I think that people nowadays who have kids are so self-absorbed that they won't put themselves out even in a little bit. Excuse you. So, I mean, it's just not a big deal to, you know, well, it's Sunday evening. It's just one day a year. It's like Christmas. You know, it's like one day a year. So what if you, you know, I don't want to be out till dark walking around. I got to get up tomorrow. So what? It's for your kids. Put well, out a little bit. kids. Barking. Anyways. Anyways. But maybe, you know, I don't know. Oh, the audience awakens. <laughs> look look at Lux, huh? What? Did you? What was that? Anyways. Oh, somebody Start. heard something out front. Got to yeah. go check it out. There might be. Uh, people are out there stirring because they, uh, in our neighborhood, this dead end street we live on, they like to set up uh, pop-up tents for some reason. Not that I'm complaining. I just, they set up pop-up tents and they sit at the end of the driveway. Oh, and the one... Across the, is that them shaking? Oh my gosh. Yes, they can't do anything without shaking and flapping their ears. They do Across it three o'clock the street, in the morning. They, when it's cold or rainy, that one year, a couple of years, they had their little fire pit out there with a yeah. little small. I mean, I think fire. that's cool. If you're going to do it, mm-hmm. be comfortable. Yeah, that's Lux up there flapping away. All right, well, we've talked long enough. Um, again, that list is uh, free, and if you have any complaints or tweaks, no problem. If you just scroll down on the very first page, on or the very first yeah the first page on our website you'll see a little section where you can leave comments i am always open to critiquing 
Uh, if you think it's a great list, I'd love to hear that too. It's always nice to get a compliment. But uh, happy Halloween, everybody. And uh, if you're trick-or-treating tonight, unfortunately, this won't come up until tomorrow. So uh, it'd be more like, hey, how was your trick-or-treat last night? But uh, so, yeah, Halloween came and went. We're going to carve our pumpkins probably tonight or tomorrow. And uh, there you go. Are you so, going to carve them? Yeah, I'm going to carve at least two okay. of them. What time is it? One o'clock. So I got a couple hours before Sonia gets here. I was going to say, are you going to carve them for trick or treat? Or? I want to. It's just okay. a matter of if I find time because don't forget, I got to cook. Yeah. I'm making a big meal tonight. It. All right, we're over. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye.